with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet coming in just a few weeks, I wanted to take a look back at my time in Sword and Shield with VGC. Now, I started recording during series five and six, I want to say, and I really enjoyed it. It was something to stay creative and stay occupied really during COVID and it ended up being something that I really enjoy. So if you've been here for any of these older videos, I want to say thanks for being here, but we're going to go over and I'm going to talk about some of my favorites throughout Sword and Shield's lifespan. They're not going to be the best, but they're going to be the ones that I enjoyed playing and the ones that I uh, created. If you guys enjoy this content, do not forget to like and subscribe. And in the comments down below, let me know what was your favorite team that you used throughout Sword and Shield's lifespan. So my first one was this Sandlax team. This was made before recording, before I started recording. It was series two and series three. And this is the team I took to the only live event, event I've been to so far. This was posted, let's see, is there a date? February 11th, yeah. So in February, early February, I went to a live event that was free about two hours away at a Buffalo Wild Wings, met some great people there and ended up top cutting with this team because my last match of Swiss, uh, one of the players knew they had enough points for their world's qualification already. And they were like, hey, is there any prizes? And the guy looks and goes, no, this is a free event at a Buffalo Wild Wings. Why, why would you think there's prizes? And he went, all right. He's like, well, I'm just gonna dip out of this match and play top cut. He turned to me and shook my hand and went, congratulations on your first top cut. And I was like, thanks. Uh, but the main premise of this team was Tyranitar and Excadrill with the Mold Breaker and Sandstream. I didn't use Sand Rush. I preferred more Mold Breaker instead because it hit uh, Mimic use if I didn't want Trick Room. But then again, I had my own trick room with a G-Max Snorlax with Curse. I had Curse Lax with an Aya Papa Berry. And this was actually made before Insinuar entered the game. So my fake out mon, my intimidating fake out mon was Scrafty. It had, at this point, no item, but people suggested to me that if I was clicking fake out, I should have a normal gem. So I went with normal gen, gem Scrafty. I'd click fake out and then I would steal items with Thief. If they brought a toga kiss, I would hit it with a poison jab. If they brought up screens, I would hit it with brick break. So I thought the Scrafty was really cool. And also I had a Destiny Bond on my Mimikyu. So if it was the last turn of Trick Room, I would Destiny Bond with my Mimikyu. So if they knocked me out before I got to reset Trick Room, I was able to take out one of their Mons. I will say if you haven't tried it, Destiny Bond does not work on Dynamax Mons. So if they knock your Mimic you out with a Dynamax Mon, you are not getting the knockout. But yeah, I would Destiny Bond my Mimic you and then I would protect the Snorlax to get Trick Room back up and hopefully sweep. I had Facade or Facade. So if they burned my Snorlax, I was still hitting hard. I had Darkest Lariat to hit ghost type mons if they tried to counter Snorlax with a ghost type mon. And then it's G-Max had a chance to replenish not only its berry, but Rotom's berry. So having a Rotom come in and use things like Will-O-Wisp, Hydro Pump, and Thunderbolt were really good. And I, I really enjoyed this team. I thought it was pretty fun. Ice Punch on Tyranitar. I don't know about that one anymore. And if we look on the notes, I went Shadow Sneak over Shadow Claw. So I went for the priority on Mimikyu over the the power of shadow claw because i had like no investment i actually had it adamant but i had no evs in attack I, at least i've i've gotten a little better i don't know what this spread on scrafty does bulky tyranitar fast extra drill i went with the timid because i didn't have the sand rush uh but next up we have the Kaparaja team. For those of you who don't know, I am a big fan of Kaparaja. 
and this was the first team I started recording with. This was the first couple of international challenges. I think the February one I used for this. And basically you'd get up Trick Room with Desclops and then try to sweep with Copperaja. I had Hatterene, but no Ndidi. I think that changed throughout the lifespan. My follow me mom was Togekiss, so I would lead Togekiss and either Hatterene or Dusclops uh, to get up Trick Room, and then I would try to sweep a Copperaja. I think Copperaja, especially, I don't think I win this one, but I do G-Max the Copperaja. I think that Copperaja's Steel Shards were a really good thing to have in the beginning formats because Togekiss was so used. It was so predominant in a lot of a lot of VGC teams, especially like the Ted, Togekiss, Exadrill, Dragapult. So to set up Steel Spikes and hit Fairy types for super hard and have Togekiss come in and take 25% health was just, I, I really liked it. Unfortunately, Copperaja is not that good of a Pokemon. It has terrible defenses, but I got frozen twice in a row in this video. That my Dusclops just thought out. Oh, wow. But it wasn't the best team, but I made Copperaja work I use Copperaja on more than one team, but this is my favorite because this is the first one I used Copperaja with. And this is kind of what I started uh, competitive play on my YouTube channel with. So this team was, is still dear to my heart, you know? Uh, the, for those of you who don't know, uh, I will have links to all these videos in the descriptions down below. It's kind of funny hearing the the quality of the mic changed because when i first started i was recording on an xbox headset that's what i was using for a mic and now i have a better mic i have a better camera i actually know how to do a layout before it was just screen it was just the capture card footage and just me talking over it and i feel like i've stepped up my game a little the next one is this team right here now this team I love because this team got me into Players Cup 3, I think. I ended up going like 15 and 3. And I really loved this team. It was Whimsicott, Incineroar, Registeel, Spectre, Tapu Fini, Moltres. So Spectre Air was the main mon. I would Tailwind, Dynamax, Spectre Air, and just try to destroy things. Or I would get the Weakness Policy, Moltres and sweep from there and while they were focused on those two mons i'd bring in registeel and set up and create an, uh, a pretty good end game i will have to say i believe the spectre spread was given to me by update vgc i forget the exact spread but it wasn't just 252 252 uh it had a little bit of hp and just slight amount of special defense and what i love about this one is here we'll let it load up uh torvid is actually a very good vgc player and the fact that i was able to kind of come back from behind in this match and make a comeback I Dynamax Moltres, they went Spectre Air, they kept Spectre Air in the back. And I ended up winning the match by bringing it down to just Spectre Air versus my Insinuor and Registeel. So, pretty cool match. I love the ending. I, get, I, I still get excited when I watch it, but... Uh, this is definitely one I would check out this video if anything just the last match because that was my thing that that got me in I did end up kind of sacking not really trying uh, during the players cup I went 0-2 and you know dropped immediately 
but it was also the baby shower for my son going on that day. It was also my birthday, the day of the Players' Cup, the first round. So there was a lot going on in my mind and I just, I wasn't ready to play and I didn't come ready to play. So, but I, I know that update VGC helped me a lot with this team. They checked it out for me. They, they gave me some feedback on it. It originally had Regi Rock over Regi Steel. And then update VGC also helps me, tried to help me. There wasn't much, uh, there wasn't much update could do to help me with the player cup three team. But as an honorable mention, I got to go with the Charger Bug team. So the Charger Bug team was a team that was built off of Charger Bug's battery ability. If you've never used Charger Bug before, battery gives a boost to any special attackers on, on the field, on your side. So as you can see, this team is all nothing but special attackers. <laughs> and it was just made for charger bug to sit there and boost up you know there was the tailwind there was the choice scarf kyogre there was the regilecki the magnet regilecki and oh my goodness the the calcs of regilecki with a battery boost magnet boost electric terrain boost and transistor boost like regilecki could do crazy damage if all those things were up there, there, somewhere there's like a screenshot on my Twitter of like the amount of damage it could do. But I like this video because it comes down. The last one is against my buddy, Kanto Clark. He beat me in the previous episode when we matched up. And when we rematched, he was not expecting the Charger Bug. And the Charger Bug came for business. Uh, Charger Bug had Bug Bite to steal berries from opposing Pokemon. Electroweb to slow them down and eerie impulse to deal with special attackers But yeah, this was a match where they just ignored the charger bug and charger bug like he charger bug did What it needed to do and spectre could come in with the battery boost and just Knock things down So let's check out. I mean, Paul Kiel was already low, but this is a great match. It's it's funny, like taking wins with Charger Bug on the field. Pokesports also used this team, so there is definitely a video somewhere of uh, Pokesports using this team, which I thought was really cool. That was the first time uh, my team was used by a bigger uh, YouTube content creator, so that was fun to see. And I believe that their Cali their Ice Rider is actually a Choice Scarf. But with Charger Bug on the field, it don't matter. It don't matter. So yeah, he tries to get up the Tailwind. And we just, we shred. Great matchup. Kanto Clark's a great guy. Uh, so we went through three teams. My fourth team is, you've probably seen this team a lot if you've been on the channel for a while. This is basically my main team that I used for all of the previous, the, the last year of international challenges. This is the Torn Ogre team that I was using with Zacian Zapdos. Uh, and Grimmsnarl. The only thing that really changed is some versions of the team had Insinuar over Landorus. Uh, some versions of the team had Thunderwave Grimmsnarl. Some versions of the team had Scary Face Grimmsnarl. But this was just like the main team that I used throughout Series 12. And I really enjoyed it. I definitely think when it comes to Dynamax Mons, like Zapdos wasn't always the best pick. But I mean, I just, I enjoyed the team so, so much. And I was able to do like really good things with it. And I feel like I played it really well. As you can see, this is getting closer. 
this was two, this video was two months ago and we're, we're already talking about sword and shield also can we go back to this video look at my standing oh i'm glad i'm not i'm not that bad anymore am i i don't know uh you had to like this was so long ago you had to hit a button to bring up the other players team this was before team preview had the opponent's team on the left side so you had to hit a button you had to hold this button down if you wanted to see the team and you couldn't pick your mons while looking at the opponent's team so that was crazy um for my last team it's kind of a tie i want to bring up the two teams that that I liked the best that weren't in a Dynamax format. The first one is my Series 10 uh, team with Tapu Lele, Zacian, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Regilecki, and Landorus. Landorus was the sheer force. Landorus was able to just like shred if you got it in a good position. I really liked the Tapu Lele. I thought it was more creative than it actually was. It was a Wonder Room Choice Scarf Tapu Lele, so you could get a Wonder Room to get rid of an item, and then you could um, you could use any of the moves that you wanted because you weren't locked by your Choice Scarf anymore, but it also was really good with Zacian because the Rusted Sword like didn't matter whether it was there or not, like once Zacian was on the field. So Zacian didn't get harmed by wonder room at all and tapu lele was able to just knock off items really quick and then my last one is my spike myth cup team with the mandibuzz i just thought that like i used a lot of cool mons this team having heatran and landorus uh, i i thought were really good picks and having last chance or was it last resort fake out kangaskhan with a silk scarf could do really good and then mandibuzz was able just to like hang around i wish i would have tried different items on the mandibuzz but with overcoat you don't have to worry about powder moves or anything like that so you could get a taunt off you could uh you you can ignore sleep direction you don't have to worry about sleep powder so like mandibuzz was really fun and that was the first time i ever actually like used mandibuzz and this was just like there was good variety in this team of like mons that i didn't consistently use a lot because as i said like with this team right here i used this team almost exclusively for most of series 12. so when we got to spike myth cup i wanted to try different things and yeah So those are some of my favorite teams that I've used throughout Sword and Shield. Don't forget to let me know what was your favorite team of yours in the comments down below. Is there any team that you're interested in? All the links will be in the description. Uh, but that's going to be all. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're working our way up to a thousand subscribers. Hopefully we get there before Scarlet and Violet. But until next time, I'm Zach and we'll see everyone later.